Hello. Oh. <laughs> um, these are words. <laughs> Not well known. Uh, this person was intimate with Mr. Allen Ginsberg. Uh, I'm going to tell you in a second. Not well published or well known uh, for reasons unknown to me. But his name is Peter Olofsky. And I, I'm just going to get into it because that's how I roll. I'll kill you. My Gibbons? So uh, this is, I got to give myself an order here. Why? This is first poem. A rainbow comes pouring into my window. I am electrified. Songs burst from my breast. All my crying stops. Mystery fills the air. I look for my shoes under bed. A fat colored woman becomes my mother. I have no false teeth yet. Suddenly, 10 children sit on my lap. I grow a beard in one day. I drink a whole bottle of wine with my eyes shut. <laughs> I draw on paper and I feel I am two again. I want everybody to talk to me. I empty the garbage on the table. I invite thousands of bottles into my room. June bugs, I call them. I use the typewriter as my pillow. A spoon becomes a fork before my eyes. Bums give all their money to me. All I need is a mirror for the rest of my life. My first five years, I lived in chicken coops with not enough bacon. My mother showed her witch face in the night and told stories of blue beards. My dreams lifted me right out of my bed. I dreamt I jumped into the nozzle of a gun to fight it out with the bullet. I met Kafka, and he jumped over a building to get away from me. My body turned into sugar. Poured into tea, I found the meaning of life. All I needed was ink to be a black boy. I walk in the street looking for eyes that will caress my face. I sang in the elevators believing I was going to heaven. I got off at the 86th floor, walked down to the corridor looking for fresh butts. My cums turns into a silver dollar on the bed. I look out the window and see nobody. I go down to the street, look up at my window and see nobody. So I talk to the fire hydrant, asking, do you have bigger tears than I do? Nobody around, I piss anywhere. My Gabriel horns, my Gabriel horns, unfold the curly cues, my gay jubilation. Thank you. My bed is covered yellow. My bed is covered yellow. Oh, son, I sit on you. 
O oh, golden field, I lay on you. O oh, money, I dream of you. More, more, cried the bed. Talk to me more. O oh, bed that takes the weight of the world, all the lost dreams laid on you. O oh, bed that grows no hair, that cannot be fucked or can be fucked. O oh, bed crumbs of all ages spilled on you. O oh, yellow bed march to the sun where your journey will be done. O oh, 50 pounds of bed that takes 400 more pounds, how strong you are. O oh, bed only for man and not for animals. Yellow bed, when will the animals have equal rights? Oh, four-legged bed off the floor forever built. Oh, yellow bed, all the news of the world lay on you at one time or another. Thank you. <laughs> Snail poem. Make my grave shape of heart, so like a flower be free, aired, and handsome felt. Grave root pillow, tongue up from grave and wiggle at blown up cloud. Ear turns close to under layer of green felt, moss and sound of rain dribble through this layer down to the roots that will tickle my ear. Hey, grave, my toes need cutting, so file away in sound curve or garbage grave way above my head. Blood will soon trickle in my ear. No choice but the grave. So cat and sheep are daisy turned. Train will tug my grave. My breath hewing genteel vapor between wheel and the track. So kitten string and ball jump over this mound so gently and cutely. So my toe can curl and become a snail and go curiously on its way. Thank you. Second poem. Second poem. Morning again. Nothing has to be done. Maybe buy a piano or make fudge. At least clean the room up. For sure, like my father, I've done flick the ashes and butts over the bedside on the floor. But first of all, wipe my glasses and drink the water to clean the smelly mouth. A knock on the door. A cat walks in, behind her the zoo's baby elephant demanding fresh pancakes. I can't stand these hallucinations anymore. Time for another cigarette, and then let the curtains rise. Then I know, know twice the dirt makes a road to the garbage pan. No ice box, so a dried up grapefruit. Maybe or install an elevator from the bed to the floor. Maybe take a bath on the bed? What's the use of living if I can't make paradise in my own room land? For this drop of time upon my eyes, like the endurance of a red star on a cigarette, makes me feel life splits faster than scissors. I know if I could shave myself, the bugs around my face would disappear forever. The holes in my shoes are only temporary. I understand that my rug is dirty, but who's that isn't? 
There comes a time in life when everybody must take a piss in the sink. Here, let me paint the window black for a minute through a plate and break it out of naughtiness or maybe just innocently accidentally drop it while walking around the table. Before the mirror, I look like a Sahara desert ghost. Or on the bed, I resemble a crying mummy hollering for air. Or on the table, I feel like Napoleon. But now for the main task of the day, wash my underwear. Two months abused. What would the ants say about that? How can I wash my clothes? Why, I'd, I'd, I'd be a woman if I did that. No, I'd rather polish my sneakers than that. And as for the floor, it's more creative to paint it than to clean it up. As for the dishes, I can do that, for I am thinking of getting a job in a luncheonette. My life and my room are like two huge bugs follow me, following me around the globe. Thank God I have an innocent eye for nature. I was born to remember a song about love. On a hill, a butterfly makes a cup that I drink from walking over a bridge of flowers. Thank you. I have a secret surprise. This is not Peter Arlovsky, but I found it and I thought it was fascinating. Uh, this is by, and you know, the reason I read this, for all of you who laud the beats and, and jerk off while reading them, uh, I think we there's a different perspective, and I thought it was interesting. Fuck yourself, Joe Soulier. This is by Jan Kerouac. It's called, Hey Jack. Hey Jack, hey Jack, is that you? This is Jan Michelle, your daughter, remember? This is your daughter, remember? I believe we met twice down in the stew pot. Yeah, it's me. I'd like to talk to the cat that begat me, you dig? I heard your voice come over the line from out there in black telephone universe land, and I felt like the RCA Victor dog, yeah. Oh, to be a gleeful mad boy, back to the mist of innocence, a beat still incubating in the unsullied womb of beathood, where the only specters of doom were two bald-headed cats who, like, could push a button and blow us all out of here, man. And now those imagined antics of Khrushchev and Ike have long dissolved in the serum of history, immortalized by Mad Magazine, which I used to steal from the corner candy store. H-bombs drawn in so many cartoons, it's become a cartoon, or at most the smallest measurement of nuclear firepower on Earth. No one seems to realize it, but I'll tell you a secret. The H-bomb, I think, is the success secret of Japan, yeah. If one of those sweet beat tootinous babes of yore had stood up and prophesied that in three decades an Iranian fanatic would hold the entire publishing world hostage, if he had said that there'd be Haitian drug gangs called Possess in Kansas City, or condoms advertised on TV, computer viruses, hypos handed out on street corners, if he had dared to suggest that in the late 80s, Soviet 
idiots would be more peace-minded than the Americans and that there would be a huge hole in the ozone from spray cans. They would have put him in a straight jacket and carted him away to an asylum. Uh, and there in the nut house, he might have written a monstrous work of fantasy science fiction to make George Orwell's 1984 look like the Wizard of Oz by comparison. Ah, my poor father, he was such a big baby noodle brain. Too noodle brain to exist in this world of geometric fear. Too animal saintly headed, too animal saintly hooded. He was too saintly to crawl through those concrete rat mazes of tortured thought. I know, I'm the same kind of baby noodle brain. Cause I can feel him in my bones. I'm getting to know him. I'm getting to know little boy blue from the inside out. Racing down, down madness, awkward on Madison Avenue to Manhattan today. Freezing in the cruel cold, I wrap myself up like an Arab. Blue hat and scarf like veils. And while rushing, caught a glimpse in store windows. I look like a mad Tuareg or, or Berber tribesman of the Sahara. Hurdling at full tilt on a horse or maybe even a camel. Turquoise shrouds and veils flapping in the hot desert wind. Only this was cold city wind here on the other side of the Atlantic, which reminded me of the ancient sunken home of continental driftwood, continental breakfast hood. Ah, oh, we humans must be a pretty hearty lot to swarm all over this poor old globe, time after time, strong as dynasties of cockroaches in those tenements I used to live in. Remember, Jack? You came to visit me in a tenement. I bet you didn't see any cockroaches, no. You were too drunk. Well, never mind. Anyway, so you say. All your fathers wore straw hats like W.C. Fields. Well, I wish I could say that, but you see, my father was the invisible man, but I won't hold that against you. Thank you. Yeah.